I will tell you right now, Council, and all the members here gathered, that I misled the Congress. How can our system of government work if the administration is not candid in its answers to the Congress? The Congressman Lee Hamilton and Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North defined the two poles of the argument, an administration obsessed with preventing leaks and a Congress kept in the dark by the White House. The administration's determination to win the release of the hostages and help the Contras despite Congress was the engine that drove a large part of U.S. foreign policy. It was a secret policy that prevented any advice from Congress. Secretly, the Reagan administration sold anti-aircraft and anti-tank weapons to Iran, hoping that would buy freedom for American hostages. Congress was not informed as required by law. National Security Advisor John Poindexter put it succinctly. I simply didn't want any outside interference. Secretly, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North devised a scheme to finance the Contras by overcharging Iran for the weapons and diverting the profits. I don't think it was wrong. I think it was a neat idea. Secretly, retired Air Force General Richard Secord brought in Iranian-born arms dealer Albert Hakim. Secretly, they opened Swiss bank accounts to funnel millions to the Contras, and just as secretly, they kept millions more in the bank without North's knowledge. North and Poindexter kept details secret from the president's top advisors. None of those details was ever made known to me. Uh, I certainly knew nothing of the diversion of funds and the markup and uh, of the basic costs and so on. Sometimes I feel like I'd like to wring somebody's neck. One of the intriguing and still unanswered questions, what role did the late CIA director William Casey play? Oliver North testified that Casey was fully informed of the diversion scheme and had a plan of his own for some of the diverted arms sales profits to create a sort of CIA within the CIA. The director was interested in the ability to go to an existing, as he put it, off-the-shelf, self-sustaining, standalone entity that could perform certain activities on behalf of the United States. No other witness has backed up North's testimony that Casey was fully aware of the diversion. And all of this, if Admiral John Poindexter is correct, happened without President Reagan's knowledge or approval. It was Poindexter who saw the president daily and often alone, who said the president never knew anything about the diversion. You know, the buck stops here with me. I made the decision. I, I felt that I had the authority to do it. I thought it was a good idea. I was convinced that the president would, in the end, think it was a good idea. But I did not want him to be associated with the decision. Congress has been astonished and deeply troubled by all these revelations that a major foreign policy initiative was being carried out by private businessmen and run by the National Security Council staff. It seems to me what happened in all of this is, in effect, there was a junta within the government of the United States. A coup, in effect, had occurred in, in the White House. The position of the National Security Council staff may have been summed up by Oliver North's secretary, Fawn Hall. I believed in Colonel North, and there was a, a very solid and very valid reason that he must have been doing this. And sometimes you have to go above the written law, I believe. North emerged as the star of the hearings, a sort of every man in uniform, frustrated with Congress and yearning for quick, decisive action. Plain and simple, the Congress is to blame because of the fickle, vacillating, unpredictable, on-again, off-again policy toward the Nicaraguan democratic resistance. But Congress had its stars, too. Warren Rudman of New Hampshire had a talent for cutting through the rhetoric. That the American people have the constitutional right to be wrong. Mitchell of Maine delivered a stern rebuttal to North, who received more than 50,000 telegrams, many praising North's devotion to the country. Please remember that others share that devotion and recognize that it is possible for an American to disagree with you on aid to the Contras and still love God and still love this country just as much as you do. But it fell to Lee Hamilton, a plain-spoken, unassuming congressman from Indiana, to be the conscience of the committee. What these committees have heard is a depressing story. It is a story of not telling the truth to the Congress and to the American people. These public hearings have cost some $10 million, consumed 41 days, and heard from 29 witnesses. 
They have answered some of the questions, but not the central one. How will Congress and the White House govern together when they so deeply distrust each other? John Dancy, NBC News, at the U.S. Capitol.